Ladies and gentlemen, probably the most popular topic on this channel has been AI art. I mean, yeah, I try to cover other stuff on this channel, but let's be honest, the most popular topic what everyone wants to see and talk about is AI art. And I mean, it's understandable, AI art has evolved so crazily, it went from incoherent scribbles earlier this year to full-blown beautiful imagery and winning actual art contests towards the end of the year, so it makes sense why it's so popular. And of course, with anything that's popular, it became controversial, and now, uh, as you saw with my recent video, which was pretty controversial, a lot of people believe AI art is theft. So, since AI art is so popular, I'm very excited to show you guys something that revolutionizes AI art. But really quick, before I get into that, you, yes, you, the viewer watching at home, if you're into AI stuff, if you're into AI projects, if you're into this brand new evolving technology, I highly, highly suggest you join my Discord with the link in the description. It's completely free, obviously, and it has a great community and a ton of AI-based resources. We have free AI art generators and science of the discord links to free ai and honestly there's a lot more ai based resources in there so it's just a great ai community in general highly suggest you join it so as you folks can see here we are on the midjourney v4 website where you can see all the public midjourney creations and man these generations look absolutely fantastic and that's what midjourney v4 really has been known for lately is these fantastic generations except Wait a second, this isn't Midjourney V4 at all. What we are viewing right now is actually Playground AI. I'm not sure if you guys have been keeping up with this website lately, but there are some extremely interesting developments here on this website. As we know, Playground AI started out as a really, really cost-effective way to generate stable diffusion art, and then slowly it also became Dolly 2 art as well, and that still is the case. It's a very, very cost-effective website. Here on Playground AI, you get a thousand generations for free per day on your account, which is great, completely free generation. And the website's really well designed as well. The generations are very easy and fun to create. And of course, they actually have some very cost-effective payment plans if you want to pay monthly for more than a thousand generations per day and if you want access to stuff like Dolly 2, for example. However, none of these were created with Dolly 2, and as you can see, they look fantastic. As you guys can see, this is the actual Midjourney website, and these generations look very, very good as well. I'm not saying that necessarily Playground AI is better than Midjourney v4 now, but I think they definitely can trade blows in some areas. Again, here is the Playground AI website again, and then we're going back to Midjourney v4. All this art is very, very subjective, but the coherency levels here off the charts for both of them, I think. They're both doing a really, really good job nowadays. And honestly, this playground thing might have flown under the radar for a lot of you guys, I think. And I suppose that makes sense. Playground AI, you know, it's not as well known as something like Midjourney, for example. But that's why I'm making this video, right? To show you guys about the latest and greatest. Now, some of you viewers at home that know a little bit more about this technology might be asking, well, how is this possible? Has Playground AI created their own AI? Well, the answer to that question is kind of complicated, actually. They haven't created their own AI in the same sense that Midjourney has created their own AI, or OpenAI has created their own AI with Dolly 2. Playground AI has created stable diffusion variants here, and that's how they're able to get these amazing images. So this really is still built upon stable diffusion. It's just very, very fine-tuned stable diffusion dream booth models. And typically when we think about dream booth, as I've talked about on this channel before, you know, it's like creating multiple images or variants of yourself, for example, but Playground AI has used this technology in a way to create their own various styles of stable diffusion that greatly increase its coherency. And again, you guys can access and play around with these for completely free on the website, so I will link it down below. And if you make anything cool, please remember to share it on my Discord with me because I'd love to see it. And by the way, that's not the only brand new feature for Playground AI. As you can see, they've created this AI-based search to find exactly what we might need. You can also add negative prompts now here in Playground AI, so this would be stuff that you don't want to see in your image. Very, very powerful tool if used correctly. And the filters, which is what I was just discussing. So my first prompt here is Kawaii Lemon Character 3D Render. 
So this should just be a cute little 3D render of a lemon character, but I'm not applying any of these brand new filters yet, and we're just using the base Stable Diffusion 1.5. I want to see what we get for a base result. Typically, Stable Diffusion is not great at my classic lemon character prompt. So generating these images here, they actually came out a little bit better than I first initially expected. By the way, we can also rate the image on how much we think it looks good. This one's not too bad, but again, none of these are particularly fantastic, and I think all of them are creepy. Let's go down to the filters now, and we'll go ahead and apply the Playtune filter. And by the way, they're giving us a pro tip here. Use character or person at the beginning of your prompt. So we'll put lemon character at the beginning of the prompt. Okay, we're definitely getting somewhere now with these images. We've lost the yellow body here that we originally had, for example, but we've gained some new details and insight. This one's actually coming out pretty decent. I mean, that is more towards a lemon character. It's got a lemon body, sort of green hair and the eyeballs, and he looks very cartoonish. Now these guys, you know, they're the wrong color. They don't necessarily look like lemon characters. This guy's holding a lemon. But I think the coherency has updated in this. We've got really intricate detailed eyes, you know, the noses and the mouth and the face and the hair here is very, very detailed. And I think it looks a lot better than, you know, some of the detail we get from these. And I did a little bit more tweaking and adjusting to the prompt here. As you can see, we did Lemon Pixar. Ooh, I spelled Pixar wrong. Character who is a lemon 3D render kawaii lemon theme. And I think that these new generations actually turned out even better. And you guys can see how quickly you can just fine tune and adjust your prompt to get a better image. So this guy, I mean, that is a straight up lemon character. I will say that he's a little bit freaky, mind you. He's scary. He's not a nice lemon character, but he's a lemon character nonetheless. This one definitely also is a lemon character, by the way. Definitely lemon skin and all that. Has a little lemon up here. This one's coming out pretty cool, I think. A lot of people might like that one. And then this is like a little baby lemon character, but still really, really great job. Very coherent, you guys will notice, with the eyes and the face and the nose and everything. Much, much more coherent than you would get with just base stable diffusion. Let's go ahead and turn the Playtune filter off here so you guys can see with the same exact prompt we just generated what we get for imagery. Again, this is the same exact prompt here with no filter at all, and then applying that Playground AI Dream Booth filter. Yeah, we get a lot better results. And again, these are results that I would consider, you know, almost competing with Mid Journey V4, if you guys might agree, if you guys have any experience with Mid Journey V4 yourselves. Fascinating and really, really awesome to see. It's, it's just so exciting to see stuff like that. All right, now we're definitely headed in some interesting territory, but you can see the variety of generations you can get with the Playtune filter. Definitely very, very much lemon characters here. This one is a little bit interesting here. Got some like lemon hair, some really detailed lemon clothes. This one's in a garden of some sort, pretty cool. I also wanted to show you guys the upscaling filter as well. So if we click on the little expand button here on any of these generations, we can bring them into full quality and full view. I believe all of these might actually be upscaled just right off the bat. I could be wrong though, but that does look like a 1024 by 1024 image to my eyes, which is really nice to see that they're doing upscaling right in the editor. But of course they have face restoration built in. We can upscale it by four times, which we can do right here. And now when we zoom into this image here, yeah, we can see that there is an absolute ton of detail with the four times upscaling. That's really, really awesome to see. Playground AI, ever since I first reviewed it on this channel, it's always been a favorite generator of mine. And yeah, the feature set they have, the pricing and everything, it is just absolutely spot on. And now with this new feature of being able to do the different filters, you can really create mid-journey level creations in here if you put the time and effort to fine-tune your prompt. Really, really fantastic to see. But I love the sharp details on this upscaler. It did a great job. A very popular one that I've been seeing pop up a lot is this wool theme. So it's called Woolitize, and it will basically take whatever your prompt is and convert it into like wool. So it looks like it's made by crochet or something like that. They've got Colourpop and Instaport. I believe these are more for portraits if you're trying to generate realistic humans. Poly mode, so this is sort of like a little sculpture, a little figurine. We'll try the poly mode filter on the same exact prompt here. And that's actually a pretty cool little creation. It's like a little 3D render type of thing, but you guys sort of get the idea with this type of filter. And they've also got the app icons. So obviously if you're trying to create maybe some app icons or designs, you could use this one. They've got retro anime, which could be very popular. I know anime is a very, very popular thing in the AI art community. 
They've got retro futurism. Obviously, this is like the, the 50s style, really cool, bubbly retro future design, pastel colors. They've got origami, analog diffusion. So I believe supposed to be like analog film. I could be wrong on that. They've also got the Play-Doh variant here, so this makes everything look like it's made out of Play-Doh. Delicate detail, Polaroid, so this makes everything look like an old Polaroid photo. Radiant symmetry, this I believe is like psychedelic art. Saturated space, lush illumination, and yeah, they've got some others here. I'm not going to go through all of them, but yeah, you can see there's definitely some really, really cool stuff. We'll try a really simple prompt here, Barista 50s Retro Future. And we're using the filter Color Pop to see if we can't get a nice portrait. I'm actually going to toss portrait in here. Wow, we got some really, really interesting art here, I would say. So obviously the barista made two little floating beer glasses here, which is pretty funny. It definitely did it in the portrait style here. I think what would help is if we made the dimensions actually portrait dimensions. But other than that, we definitely got some 50s retro future portraits of a barista. It definitely looks like a real 50s retro future color portrait. It's really, really interesting the colors and everything in this and you can even see the film grain color pop did a really really good job of generating this let's try the retro futurism filter on this same prompt i don't think it's specifically meant to do portraits but let's see how it does wow it actually did a shockingly good job with this this is definitely one of those types of generations you can tell that the specific filter we used here was not trained to do portraits. However, we have face restoration in our upscaler, so we could actually use that to restore some of the faces here. Dang, it really did get the retro future vibe down. I'm gonna go in here and we're gonna apply face restoration to see if we can't fix that derpy face. Okay, it maybe kind of did a little bit of something. It definitely upscaled it well. Didn't exactly fix the face all that well. Let's give this one a shot. Maybe this one will be a little bit easier. <sighs> maybe fix the face just a little bit. It's a little bit better. It's not bad, but Definitely could use some work here. In general though, pretty cool. I like it. All right, now we're gonna go for the retro anime filter. Lemon themed queen, queen of the lemons Ghibli style. So we're looking for like a woman that's the queen of the lemons. And since I did Ghibli style, I figured we'd go for more of a 16 by nine movie aspect ratio. Although it really might screw up our generation. So I gotta be careful. Yeah, I mean, these are definitely pretty cool, but I think it screwed it up a little bit. Did a few more generations. I would consider these actually a little bit better. This one's not too bad, especially. Definitely like a retro anime vibe from this. We can see she's got some lemons maybe hanging from the side of her face, and she looks like she could be a queen. This one definitely as well, again, looks a lot like a queen. Retro anime style for sure. These are pretty interesting as well. Definitely, you know, a queen with some lemons hanging off the side. This one's not as coherent, though, I would say, in comparison to a few of the other styles we were looking at. All right, I've used the wool mode, which definitely worked very well here. My prompt was portrait of a woman wearing crazy futuristic designer clothes. And yeah, this woman is no doubt made of wool. I will say that. It's actually kind of gross and horrifying. It's a little bit weird to think about, but she's wearing crazy wool designer clothes and she looks like she's from a world made of wool but uh i do have to say the coherency is definitely there very accurate to the prompt can't deny that but it's a little bit of a scary looking image and also did one in a different aspect ratio that i think came out very very good as well so just beyond that of course we do have the new search function up in the top left hand corner here the ai based search so if you type lemon character in, for example, you can get hundreds of different lemon characters that people have generated. And wow, all of these are actually really, really fantastic. But yeah, the AI search is really, really good. So definitely props to this feature. It works fast. It works really well. And it helps you get some really, really good ideas for generating new images, especially because you can see all of the prompts. But viewers, yes, that is all I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for watching. Definitely let me know what you guys think about Playground AI and its new features in the comments below. Is it better than Midjourney V4 at this point, especially with the much cheaper price point? Check out the Discord and share some of your creations in there and check out some of my other videos. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.